gospel lesson comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42, and I'm reading out of the Revised Standard Version. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Amen. This morning in that library class that Phil mentioned, I'm going to quote Mike Shields. We discussed Dr. Knott's sermons from the week before. And so we were discussing his sermon from last week, which is Matthew 10. And when you read Matthew 10, you come to probably Mike's same conclusion, that this is brutal. I'm out. And we agreed with Mike. There's no way that we can really follow Jesus on our own. And I'm paraphrasing him, but it's true. When you listen and read Matthew 10... And you read the consequences of being a disciple of Jesus, you're out. There's no way you can do that on your own. And when I think back about Presbyterian Church and what I learned, and I think about what we were taught as kindergartners, there's a disconnect between reading Matthew 10 and learning that our chief purpose in life is to glorify God and to enjoy him. And if you want more details of Matthew 10, you can listen to Dr. Knotts on YouTube, as you know. But it is really difficult. I mean, you're promised that there's going to be division in your family, that you could lose your life, that you have to go without provisions, you have to rely on other people. It seems impossible. And it seems like it all becomes a duty. 
There's an excellent quote by Philip Brooks. He was an Episcopalian minister in Boston in the 1800s. And he writes, Duty makes us do things well. Love makes us do them beautifully. And on this holiday weekend, I think it is important for us to take a moment and be very grateful for all the people today and in our past who have been dutiful, who have done their duties well, who have shown up, who have created freedoms where we can sit here in a church and worship God in the way we choose, that we can count on that there's hospitals. There's a hospital for West to go to this morning. We can count on healers. We can count on educators, people who've shown up. We can count on our farmers and our grocers. Duty makes us do things well. And while I've left out a whole host of people who've done things well, we know in our hearts we are totally connected to one another because of people doing things well. But at the same time, I think there is a promise by God and through Jesus that we are to enjoy him and that that love makes us do things beautifully. So when we look at these verses, 40 through 42, that ends chapter 10, I don't know if we find that by reading it literally, that love that makes us do things beautifully, but I think if we look between the lines and look at the lines and the promises, we see it. So first of all, I would say let's look at line quoted out of the NIV translation. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. So Jesus is speaking to his disciples and saying, anybody who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes God who sent me. That simple little sentence, I think, has three very important points for us. Anyone who welcomes you, who accepts you, and extend that same logic to anyone who does something for you, does it for Jesus. And we've heard that before, that when the disciples asked, when do we do that for you, Jesus? And he said, when you fed the poor, when you housed the, the, um, the homeless or um, took care of the sick. But we are so connected by our actions that even a tiny cup of water you give to someone who's thirsty is also a cup you give to Jesus. Which makes true also any unkindness any hurt, any harm you cause someone, you also cause that same pain for Jesus. We're not in a vacuum. Everything is relational, connected, wave set in motion, consequences, ripple effect of our actions are vast. There's a great movie, it won the Oscar, everything, everywhere, all at once. And while that's not exactly on target with this, and they certainly weren't talking about Christ in the movie, that concept of everything, everywhere, all at once, we are so incredibly connected. So much so that in the message translation, it reads, anyone who helps the messenger of God becomes a messenger of God. Anyone who gives something and the person who receives it are the same. So you're sitting here listening to me, which is a gift, an opportunity, and I'm sitting here talking to you, which is an opportunity. What we give and what we receive is the same. There's no hierarchy, which is amazing. Greg Zuslag, who taught our class up for a few weeks, ended it at the very end saying, this is Jesus communism. And it's probably not the wisest thing to mention communism on independence of Americans. But at the same time, he was saying, this is how Jesus operates. We don't live in a vacuum. We don't have state communism for sure, but we do have such a responsibility and a need to give 
and to receive and to see the equality in that. Secondly, Jesus says in that same sentence, paraphrasing, I'm going with you, and so is God who sent me. So we have been sent. We have a purpose, a job, just like Jesus who has been sent by God. And we're not sent alone on our own, which most of us are pretty experienced at this. We know that even in our darkest times, our loneliest times, we are not alone. But there could be times at this stage in life where we wonder, have we been productive? Have we been useful? Have we used the gifts we have been given? And when Jesus tells us that we have been sent, that there has been a plan for us, do remember that you have a purpose even if you don't see it or feel it. Claim that relationship. It's our identity. And a question to ask is when you think about yourself being sent by God, by Jesus, do people know that about you? When you go into a space, any kind of space, any kind of activity, do they know that you automatically are bringing Jesus and God with you? It's kind of an interesting thought. I'm not just operating on my own. I'm bringing Jesus and God. Which leads me to my third point, that we can infer also that Jesus is saying, where you go, you are taking me. Think for a moment about friends coming into town. I'm relatively new in San Antonio, so when I have a family member or a friend coming, I'm thinking, oh, they need to see the botanical gardens. Those are awesome. The architecture is beautiful. That will be great. We'll show them that. Um, Mmm, Lily's cookies. I found Lily's cookies one day and I've enjoyed them ever since. Um, Landa Library, I love that building. But you make plans, you start thinking about where I'm going to take my friend. What would be enjoyable? We anticipate, we plan, we enjoy. And I think that's how it works with Jesus. Where we go, not only is he coming with us, but we are taking Jesus with us. Not as a street corner evangelist where we're shoving our belief system on somebody, but we take Jesus as our friend, a friend we have planned events for, that we take, that we want to share, that we want to meet our other friends. And I think it's in that taking, our relationship grows with Jesus that it changes from duty and starts becoming love, slowly, usually over time, a lot of time. But we become more than followers. We do become friends, co-workers, connected. And as you sit with that mental shift, think how that might change just your day-to-day -day activities, your perspective. Think of the enormity of that privilege, that responsibility, that trust that Jesus is willing to go where you go. And the love that develops as you realize that he follows. In the message translation, which I highly advocate the message translation for a lot of verses, the conclusion reads, this is a large work I've called you into, but don't be overwhelmed by it. It's best to start small. Give a cool cup of water to someone who is thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice. And I jumped at that word apprentice. We are true apprentices when we give or receive. We are so much more than duty-bound followers trying to follow Jesus well. We are apprentices committed to Jesus in the eternal art of learning how to love 
beautifully. So be it. Amen. Thank you.